We, we have been there for a very long time. We opened our doors in 1937, so we are the oldest animal charity in Malta. After COVID, basically sort of trying to reinvent the operation to be able to do what we've always done in a more sustainable way and trying to maximize our resources and trying to, to have an impact on the welfare of animals in Malta. Our operation, thankfully, is helped a lot by our charity shops. So our charity shops um, are, are a big help to, to the day-to-day -day operations and expenses involved in, in bringing animals into the home. We have to go back to basics and look at our, our accounts and look at um, our, our spending and, and our operation. And we had to start from the beginning again, basically, which was good because we found ways, other, other alternative ways of being more resourceful and more effective. And looking at the operation and seeing what worked, what didn't work. So we dropped what didn't work and we kept going with what was effective and what was having an impact on, on animal welfare in Malta. After Covid we were suffering very badly. What with the shops had closed down a lot, um, losing a lot of volunteers and also the staff in the home. We, we just suddenly couldn't afford anything. Maybe it was a blessing, maybe it was a blessing because things have turned around so much and it's a much better operation, more sustainable. They have a chance to really do things properly at last. Every year the temperatures are, are, are getting hotter and we do keep log of, of the temperature. We took the opportunity to install good heavy duty fans. We have installed a few more air conditioners. We we're quite lucky over there that a lot of the kennels have kind of a shelter. So the rock formation is very thick and naturally there is a cool breeze coming in from the from the bastions. So some of the kennels are really well set up for that. And the community put a bit of pressure on the government, which was good because it made them realize that, you know, we can't forget our animals. We did have a small allocation to, to apply for some minor restructuring, which helped a lot. So the MSPCA is housing uh, cats and dogs. Um, so we have both cats and dogs. So we start our day at seven. The earlier, the better. Sometimes we get there before because of the heat. We do the normal cleaning and the, the feeding and the walking. Then we spend a lot of time socializing the animals, trying to get basic training done as much as possible, trying to get them into a routine. Routines are important for them because our aim over there is, is basically rehoming, rehoming the animals. Mm -hmm getting them into better places and being able to live in a home environment with you know good people into better places so we do dedicate a lot of our time during the day to making sure that they have the basic training we can only do so much in a shelter but we do focus on it in fact we do have a behaviorist now on board that is guiding the protocols when it comes to behavior training special cases because we do get a lot of challenging cases So through the week, we dedicate a lot of time to education, which would mean sort of visits to schools. So bringing on volunteers that are doing their interns, uh, internships, and they come to us for two or three months and they get to spend time with animals, getting to know what sort of, you know, different, different personalities, different scenarios when it comes to animal care. These are usually students particularly interested in animals and want to follow a career, which is great because we're, we are we're encouraging them, you know, to, to start a career in, in, animal, in animal welfare, which is needed, it's really needed. Trying to bring humans and animals closer together, trying to... It, this, was, this was a program that we started actually in COVID because there was a lot of loneliness and anxiety, especially, you know, people's homes, and they were very open to this program, which was great because the animals needed it too, the animals needed to connect and we didn't want them to keep connecting with the same people over and over again. So this was a way of getting them out and getting them into a different environment and it's still ongoing. Completed the extension of six shelters together with the, the drainage system that needed to be restructured and the proper ventilation for those shelters and the gate which was important because otherwise we couldn't use them. So now we've 
completed that part and now we are able to continue with the rest. Came to an additional 10 to 15 dogs per month, which was very good. This year we're close to 90 intakes, sorry, 100 intakes and close to 90 rehomings, which is good for us. It's a longish process to be able to make sure that, you know, we have a good fit. Now he is now putting sort of putting together the, the agility area for us, which is extremely important. It's the whole point of extending was to give them more space for training, more space, workshops, and what, that's what we want to have at the back. So we're going to have the, the workshops for extending our education outreach. We have the rehabilitation area on the agility area and the training. And also this is the space to facilitate adoptions as well. It is an amazing support, to be honest. We don't have such strong support like this, so it was really animal welfare. It's never really given much acknowledgement. It's always the other areas which are put first. For the gaming industry to come forward and really show, you know, a passion for this area, for, for animal welfare, you know, gave us hope, to be honest. We've been going through a lot of struggle over the years and it is important that the community start to recognize the importance of animals. They give us so much. They give us, you know, they teach us about respect. They teach us about, you know, building empathic skills towards one another, accepting one another. And this is a really important field in society that we need to protect. It's a real turning point for us. It is unheard of. So we are just so grateful. Animals are always the last thing on the list. It isn't only about saving an animal. It is saving us. It's saving the community, saving the environment. It's all part and parcel of the same thing. So if a large company like yours that may seem so far away from what we do feel that you know, this is important, then my goodness, thank you a million times over.